This presentation covers some of the basic concepts underlying system calls that are widely used on modern operating systems. The core hardware, peripherals, and other resources on a computer are managed by the operating system's kernel. All interactions with the operating system's kernel are performed through programming language libraries and the application programs and software tools utilize the programming language libraries to interact with the operating systems. We are going to focus on these interactions that occur with the operating system in this presentation. Remember that there are different facets with which users interact with the system. Administrators work with the setup and configuration. Users use applications and programmers develop these tools that are used by all of the users, administrators, on this operating system. Of course, the OS performs five key functionalities. It manages users. It does process management that is running programs and manage the resources consumed by them. It also does storage management in terms of managing files and data on disk. It does memory management and memory being one of a key resource. And it also does manages devices and other input output operations. All of these functionalities are performed by the operating system and all application programs need to interact with the operating system in order to interface with any of these resources. This is where system calls come in. The operating system exposes an application programming interface or API. These APIs are synonymous to methods in programming languages. So in programming languages, we use APIs or method calls, and operating systems provide similar type of approach for interacting with them. Calls to the operating system API are called system calls or syscalls for short. So imagine that they are calls to another piece of software, except these are special calls and they're called system calls as we are interacting with the operating system. Typically, these system calls will go from what is known as the application that is running in user space into the kernel, which is the operating system kernel. In the, in the kernel space, the kernel will perform some operation and give the result back to the application. There are many different system calls. You need to use system calls to utilize any resources. So for example, if you want to allocate memory in Linux internally, it calls the break system call or S break system call to allocate more memory or free up memory resource. Similarly, if you wanted to open or create file, you would call the open system call in Linux to perform that operation. Um, for example, changing user IDs or loading processes for different users is accomplished through set UID system call. Typically, system calls need to happen only when you need to use resources like open files, read data, allocate memory, write data to the network, open sockets, so on and so forth. But when you're simply running a program on the CPU, that means a program is doing just mathematical operations on the ALU, the operating system will not be in the picture other than for context switching. So in order for the syscalls to work, most modern microprocessors provide protection layers to ensure that malicious user applications cannot jeopardize the operation of the operating system kernel. To ensure this, the kernel typically runs in what is known as ring zero or the most privileged or protected layer in the microprocessor. All other applications run in ring three, and this is a typical security setup that is provided by the microprocessor, specifically on the x86 platform supported by Intel and AMD. Note that restricted instructions can run only in the privilege ring, and the kernel is the only piece of software that will be allowed to run these privileged instructions that are necessary to manage and interface with hardware resources. All of the applications have to call the operating system to execute these privilege instructions and to be able to access resources, and this call is called the system call. Special instructions are used by the microprocessor to move between the rings to ensure and apply rules so that it can guarantee that when the calls are going to the kernel, it is safe and secure to make those calls. And this calling feature is used to implement system calls on most operating systems. So remember, a system call, or syscall for short, is a call to the operating system. So the user application makes a system call, typically through the programming language libraries, into the operating system 
to accomplish some specific operation or to use some specific resource. System calls run in privilege kernel space and use special instructions to accomplish this. So the transition between, say, the user space to the kernel space takes some time. So you usually it'll take a, a hundred CPU cycles in order to accomplish, check all the uh, permissions and make the system call. Uh, system calls are some designed to be quick, but you know they're not as fast as method calls, but they are definitely slower. Uh, but you don't have a choice if you want to interface with the operating system. You've got to make those system calls, and consequently, you do pay a little bit of overhead for those system calls. And of course, some of the system calls can cause some of the processes on the system to pause. So some of the system calls are pretty powerful, and you have to be cautious when using them. So let's look at a big picture. When we create an executable program, also called a binary file. The operating system's loader program loads these binary files along with standard libraries into memory, creating a process. And of course, the loader also dynamically links or establishes links between the programs and some of the standard libraries that the program would need to run. So when the program needs to perform and the process needs to perform some input output operations, the call goes to the standard library through a system call to the operating system kernel. So the standard libraries provide the infrastructure uh, to make the system call. So from a programming language perspective, it might appear as if you're calling a normal method, but internally the standard libraries map it to a suitable system call to the operating system. And the operating system in turn works with the device drivers to interact with the hardware to perform different operations. So it's kind of important to understand this flow um, of calls that occur in every program. It doesn't matter what programming language you use, this would be the same kind of an operation in material of programming language used. All of the system calls can be observed by different tools. In the case of GNU Linux, there's a specific application called strace or system call trace to observe system calls. So strace will print the system call made by a program. It'll print it in a standard format with a method name and, and the parameters so it's easy to observe and understand it. And observing system calls is useful for a variety of purposes. First, it is to ensure the programs are correctly operating with the uh, underlying operating system and are using the correct system calls. You can observe behaviors of programs so you can see how many files they open, how much memory they consume, when do they open files, when do they consume memory, what kind of files they're accessing. You'll be able to observe all of these behaviors of a program even if you don't have the source code. So it kind of is a handy tool to observe behaviors of the program um, to even when you don't have the source code. And you can ensure that these programs are behaving correctly and as expected. And of course, using this information, it's possible to hack the software programs, even if you don't have the source or anything. Just by observing system calls, you could hack the programs to understand how they work and possibly provide a different files or different data to, to, to hack the program and have it do something different. Let's look at a simple example. Assume that we have a file called hello.cpp that just prints hello world. Very simple file. We are trying to keep this example simple so the output from strace is simple to understand. Uh, you would have to typically compile this file. Notice that typically he here we are specifically compiling with a static flag to try and keep the dynamic libraries to the minimum so that the output from strace is not overwhelming. And now we run the program through strace. Notice how it is run. You say strace dot slash hello to run the program. And strace will print the system calls made by the program. Typically, you'll always see one of the exec system calls. Exec is the system call that's used to run a program. And here you'll always see exec as the first system call in Linux. Uh, there are a couple of break system calls which are used to allocate memory. Um, there is also the write system call that is used to print the uh, hello world string onto the screen. So you'll see the call to write system call. And then finally, you'll see a call to the exit uh, system call, which is used to exit out of the process. And notice that it's exit group because in Linux, when a process terminates, all of the child processes are automatically terminated. So you have the exit group as an entire group of processes are terminated. And this is how you can use strace to trace different system calls. 
Different operating systems provide different set of system calls. Here are links to some of the system calls that um, the operating system support. And of course, keep in mind, you would typically not directly make these calls. Instead, you would use language libraries that in turn make the system calls on your behalf. So typically, we'll work with the language libraries, but internally, they all map to system calls to actually accomplish the task that uh, the methods are supposed to accomplish. By default, most operating systems will support a subset of system calls called uh, POSIX. POSIX is an acronym for Portable Operating System Interface. It's an IEEE standard that defines the basic set of API that all the operating systems should support. And this API provides a level of portability between operating systems for different libraries.